Hello and welcome. I'm so happy you're here because that means you are officially ready to take on your very first project with ReadyMag. Congrats to you, I'm very excited. My name is Danica, I'm a designer and I work at ReadyMag and today I have the great honor of taking you through the basics of ReadyMag. Let's get started. As you're probably already aware, ReadyMag is an incredibly powerful and fun browser-based design tool that lets you bring all kinds of online publications to life. So in this tutorial, we're gonna be covering everything you need to get going in ReadyMag. That means how to start and open a new project, getting familiar with the drag and drop interface, the different widgets and presets, animations and layout options, and finally, how to publish your first project, work with analytics and share your site with colleagues, friends or clients. So let's get right into it. This is your ReadyMag home screen. To help you get comfy with it, we're gonna start with a bit of a tour. When you add a new project, it'll appear here and your menu items to navigate to different sections of your profile and helpful resources are listed here on the left-hand side. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do when starting a new project is decide if you wanna start with a fresh blank page or work with one of our templates. You can browse our templates by clicking on this templates block right here and having a look around. If you start with an empty project, your editor will look like this. And if you start with a template, it'll look like this. For this tutorial, we're gonna be designing something from scratch. So let's click the plus icon at the top of our screen to create a new project. Great, we're here. Now let's take a look at the interface. In ReadyMag, the design process happens entirely in this editor. It auto saves all changes, your version history and loads whenever you create or update a project. Now you'll notice we've got two docs here at the bottom of the editor, left and right. The left dock is your widgets panel. This is where you'll add your widgets, which make up the contents of your site. Arrange and organize your layers, designed for different views and devices, like adding breakpoints for a tablet and mobile. And finally, where you can add and organize your project pages. Great, now that we've got a handle on that, let's move over to the right dock. These are the features and settings that you may use less frequently than those in the left dock, but they're still super important to the overall setup of your project. Here you've got your different design modes, your grids and guides, your project settings, and also very important, your help section, which is full of a bunch of helpful resources that you can access anytime. You'll notice you can zoom in and out by using the shortcut command plus minus as if you're working in an artboard. And that's kind of because you are working in an artboard. You can always see the bounds or frame of your artboard and your individual page height in pixels here. And working like this really comes in handy when you have cases where you need to zoom out of your design in case you have an animation that like starts off screen and then comes in more on this later, but it's very useful. Grids and guides are self-explanatory and I strongly recommend you use them to give your project some structure. Just click and drag the sliding scale to adjust the numbers of rows or columns that you want in your design and make any other like fine tuning or adjustments that you need. When you click the eye icon, at the bottom of your screen, this toggles you to your preview mode where you can see your live site in action. Important, it's not published here yet, but it lets you preview how your published site will look with animations, you know, effects and all. If you click on the viewer settings here, I find it helpful to decide right at the beginning of a project how you want your pages to sort of stack and flow. This is one of our ReadyMag templates really quick and I just wanna use it for a second to show you how changing your page structure changes the whole flow of your site. You can use navigation arrows to click through your pages horizontally or you can stack them vertically like cards or have them scroll in a continuous flow. You can also change these settings at any time. It's not set in stone. If you get bored with one flow, you can just mix it up to another one if your design allows for it. So it's good to make those decisions at the beginning of a project. So getting back to our blank canvas, now that we know where everything is, let's get into the nitty gritty. It's time for us to design a page together and find out together how everything works. So to start us off, we're gonna be exploring the widgets panel. These widgets are pretty self-explanatory, but you'll wanna explore each to discover their different capabilities. We've got the text widget to add any native text, and we've got the image widget to add and crop images. Then we've also got vector shapes, videos. You can link to a video here or upload your own. Shots, which are super cool and are essentially a video that plays frame by frame based on a set animation or trigger. A lot of animations, which are pre-animated vector graphics that really double your interactivity, super cool. Photo slideshows, buttons, hotspots, which can be used to create menus and all kinds of things. More on that later. Forms, a cart button for e-com needs, maps, music, and for the overachievers among us, some custom code, which I won't be using today, but you may. So to add a widget, just click on it and it'll automatically add to your screen. Now, when you select it, you'll see the widgets property toolbar pop up on the right. 
Different properties will be available for different widgets, but many always stay the same. This toolbar allows you to style the widget's contents, position it on the page, animate it, pin it to your screen, and basically do any fine tuning you need to do with it. Let's do some fun stuff here. Also, we're gonna add a little animation that we're gonna be using and looking at more in depth later on. Okay, hopping back to the left panel, the preset section is where you're gonna find useful widget presets and templates for text, buttons, menus, you got it. Kind of browse around in here, there's a ton of cool stuff. The animated widget section is especially popular and I find it's a really great place to start if you've got a more complicated interactive layout in mind for your site. As an example, if you wanna add a cool full screen menu to your site, you don't have to edit it completely from scratch. You can just click and go from there. And if you want a cool scrolling marquee at the top or bottom of your page, all you have to do is click the widget and edit it to your needs, sort of like this. This is when we kind of use that like command plus minus shortcut. That's one of those moments where it comes in handy. Bear with me here as we do a little bit of speed editing to create this custom scrolling marquee. Also, we're gonna add a background shape, like a rec simple rectangle to create this look that our scrolling marquee has a border. Pop it behind, pin it. Okay, that's nice. Let's just keep that there for now. Quick side note that we do have another really cool tutorial on how to create hamburger menus and just really cool interactive menus in general for your site that you might wanna check out. We'll link it at the top of the screen or below this video in the caption. So now that we know the basics of how widgets work, let us put it all together and make a very simple landing page, but not boring, it's gonna be cool. Okay, so we've got a couple elements left over from what we've just worked with. Um, I've done a quick little bit of finessing here to the menu so that it's no longer a full screen menu and is actually just a half screen menu. So to give you a little preview, this is the page we're gonna try and be creating right now. This is like a super simple little landing page. How do we get there? Let's keep these here because they're gonna work into our design. I think the first thing we're gonna wanna do is go into our grids and guides and create a couple guides for ourselves. Mine are already ready here. We've got four columns and I've got a margin of 20 between my columns to keep things really clean and organized. Next, we're gonna add an image. And you know what, we're gonna go into Unsplash because clouds, that's what we need, because Unsplash has some really, really good images. These are all royalty free, easy to use. Okay, let's say we're gonna select this one for now. That looks pretty good. We're just gonna pop this over and populate these two columns. We can always adjust this later. Maybe I'll go even a little closer. This is looking a little bright because I know that I want white text over top. So I'm also gonna pop a black rectangle behind it um, and bring down the opacity of this image a little so that it's like a little darker and toned down everything. And the text is more contrasty on top. Fantastic, that's looking pretty good. Okay, now we've got our kind of two like split screen design already taking shape. Now we've already sort of learned how to put a text widget in place. What we can do now is click option and then click on my widget and drag a version of it away. And it'll literally create, like duplicate that widget instead of copy paste, it's just a really easy thing to do. Mm -hmm. Cause we want to create a little menu down here that we're going to pin to the bottom of our screen. So we're just going to create this here. What do we want it to say? LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook. Let's drag them in place already. I think we want these to be kind of at the bottom of our screen here. And I want them pinned so that they're always there. This is the easiest way to pin a widget to your screen. You literally grab it, select it, click this little like push pin icon here and then select the positioning. Fantastic. So now we've got the same style for the text that we're using here, down here. However, we do want to update the style of these buttons because we want these to be linked. So this is what we do. We're gonna go in here and highlight a single, you don't wanna highlight all because they are gonna be individual uh, links. Highlight that. LinkedIn, our first one. And you're gonna go over here to the link icon. Click that. And then this is where if you've got a um, website with like multiple pages, you could put like link to page two, link to my about page, link to contact. What we're gonna do is just put a URL in. So we're gonna go to linkedin.com, brilliant. We're gonna do the same thing to these. These are buttons, fantastic. Now, what do we need next? We need a title, this is looking very empty. We're gonna go into our text widget. Our title of our website is called Cloud9 Studio. We're gonna make it white. I want a really massive title, 96, that is huge. The thing is, I also want my line height to be the same height. So we're gonna make those equal and link it back. We're gonna change this to be Neuhaus Grotesque. Also, because I'm a condensed girl, we're gonna make that minus three, stunning. 
Okay, I don't have any rows in this design. You might also wanna work with rows to just make sure that your baselines of your text and all your contents are lining up properly. So now we've got a title, our social links, a little bit of text here. We've got an animated menu, and we've got our little scrolling marquee left over from a few steps ago. Ah, one thing though, because we've got an outline here to our shape, to our scrolling marquee, let's reflect the same thing in the image here. Let's click on the image, and we're gonna add a border of one in black. This is looking pretty good, but I think I wanna add an icon. So let's go into our widgets panel, click, and we're gonna click shape. There obviously are like shapes available in a free plan. However, there are way more available in paid plans. That's just like a little disclaimer here that uh, on a free plan, you won't be able to search cloud and get all these incredible cloud options. I'm checking for a cloud I like. Okay, I love this one. That's a very cloudy cloud. Let's make it smaller. Let's make it white. That's it's doing something. Okay, let's keep going. We're almost there. So we're gonna do our handy uh, option, click and drag. So we're gonna create a little scroll for news. That's looking good. I think we're gonna add another text box here. So let's select the widget panel, click on text. We're gonna put some text into it that makes sense and like finesse that a little bit. Go into the properties editor and click typography. We want plantain. Okay, this we want some bigger type. That looks good. You can also edit text differently within one text box. The last couple steps we're gonna do will be adding a little bit of animation to bring this whole site to life a little bit more. Okay, so a couple of these things are already animated and I'm gonna show you at the end how to apply that animation to any other widgets because it is a really cool shortcut and will improve your workflow by a ton. We're gonna animate this cloud to be like bouncing up and down a little. And so we're gonna do that in a two-step animation. You're gonna click on your cloud. You're gonna go to animation and we want a load animation. So you're gonna click load and then you're gonna click opacity. And that means that basically load will be the trigger for the animation and changing opacity is what it's gonna do. So it's gonna go zero to 100 and we're gonna make that be 1.2. So it goes like kind of slow. And then you can preview your animation here by clicking the eye. That's gonna fade in really nicely. So we want that to be the first step of our animation. And second step, we want it to be that it sort of bobs up and down the way a little cloud might. So we're gonna click in this step section, we're gonna click on plus, and then we're gonna click on move. And now you'll see we've got a step one and a step two of this animation. Here, we just want it to bob up sort of ever so slightly. Put minus seven, that looks good. This is where you can show how much you want it to move, where you want it to move, all that fun stuff. And we don't want any delay on ours, and we want it to go really slow. So maybe let's make the duration of our animation two seconds. Um, we're gonna want it to loop so that it's sort of bouncing up and down. Um, so let's click reverse. And here we can select ease out. Let's have a little look. Ooh, that is looking pretty good. I do feel like I wanna breathe a little bit more life into this design. We're going to apply some nice sort of like float in animation um, to our text. And because this is already animated here, these two pieces, so I'm gonna click on the widget that has an animation and I'm gonna click Shift Command C. Brilliant, that copies the animation. And I'm gonna click on the widget I want to apply the animation to. And we're gonna click Shift Command V, magic. It'll bring up the animation uh, editor just to show you that an animation has been added. Look at this. <gasps> now it animates in with the rest, brilliant. Okay, I'm gonna delay this one a little bit more so it comes in last to kinda get a little bit of hierarchy going on. And I wanna apply the same animation to my Cloud9 Studio title. So again, we're gonna Shift Command C and Shift Command V to our title. Let's check that. Beautiful. Okay, let's click on Preview and see what we've what we've got. Okay, not bad. Looking pretty good for a first start. Let's head back into our bigger tutorial, not this tutorial within a tutorial, and look at what's next. Amazing, we've created our first project page. Okay, obviously we'd probably add a few more pages and build this out more if it was a real website. But for the sake of this tutorial, let us pretend we're finished, we're done, we're feeling good, and we are ready to think about publishing. Oh, but are we? We are missing one very crucial step before we can even 
think about publishing our project. So what we've just done is a beautiful desktop version of our site. What we still need to do is double check that it looks right across mobile as well. This means going over to our left dock down here, back to devices and clicking the plus sign. Being conscious of your tablet view is really a good idea as well, but mobile is a non-negotiable. By default, if you don't create specific layouts for mobile or tablet, people will see a scaled down version of your desktop layout, which is what we can see when we click here. This obviously isn't ideal. So with a few tweaks, let's optimize our design for mobile. Let's click on single column layout. Now what you can see is our desktop layout is converted into something a little bit more mobile friendly, but we're not there yet. So we're gonna do a little bit of finessing, just adjusting the text and images a bit to fit nicely in mobile. Ooh, amazing, okay. A super important note here is that ReadyMag layouts are desktop first, which means that any changes you make to the desktop layout automatically carry over to mobile and tablet views, but not all changes made on mobile carry over to your desktop view. You can click on your different devices regularly to see how your site is looking across, you know, different views or check out in this little window here how your different widgets look in the desktop version of your site. We've made a YouTube tutorial specifically about creating in detail for mobile. So I highly recommend you check that out. We've got a bunch of really great info in there. Okay, that was some speed editing. Now we have got our mobile and desktop designs done. And I think we are in fact ready to think about sharing and publishing. Let's go. So if you've got teammates, colleagues, clients that you wanna collaborate with ahead of publishing your site, this is a stage where you might share your work with them for further work or feedback. One quick note here is that collaboration features are available on all paid plans and the number of collaborators you can add is dependent on the plan. So you can invite collaborators directly from the editor by clicking the plus icon down here next to your user pick on the right panel. Enter the email address of whoever you'd like to invite and click invite. Here, you can decide what access you want them to have, and you can either share your project with them in layout locked or unlocked mode. In layout locked, they can still edit content like text, but they can't fundamentally rearrange your layout or design. Honestly, sharing a project in layout locked mode is probably the best idea when sharing with clients to avoid accidents. If you want clients or colleagues to be able to add comments right in your project, um, just navigate to the comments mode and have them drop any feedback right over the widgets or part of the page that they want to give you feedback on. So once all hypothetical feedback has been addressed and your project is ready to go, click the gear icon at the bottom of the editor window to access your project settings. Enter a title and project description for your site. And from here, you can also edit the portion of your URL shown after the project's primary domain. If you wanna map a custom domain to your site, we've very handily got another YouTube tutorial about that that walks you through how to do this step-by-step. So once you've got a custom domain, if you're on a paid plan, you'll be able to enable Google Analytics for your site. We've got a whole in-depth article on that in our help section that we will also link below. Adding a favicon is one more great thing you can do when and if you have a custom domain. A favicon is the icon that shows up in the browser address bar or tab when you click your site and you can customize it by uploading your own image. Remember to make sure it's no bigger than 256 by 256 pixels. It's a small guy. For our last step, if you wanna go above and beyond, click into your individual page settings to add individual descriptions and SEO to your individual project pages. Now for the moment of truth, click the eye icon at the bottom of your editor to preview your project and make sure everything looks as it should. When you're ready, click the publish button. Congrats, you did it. Your site is live and it's now accessible via the public link or your custom domain. So search it up and see for yourself. Whew, that was a lot of info we just covered together. Remember, ReadyMag has a ton of helpful resources that can help you at every and any stage of your designing and publishing process. And you can find all of that info in our learn section, which we will link below. We also post some amazing stuff on TikTok and some super useful smaller tutorials there. So if you don't follow us already, may I suggest you go check that out. I hope you find it really helpful. Now take a short break, have a glass of water and go design something. We can't wait to see what you make.